Undoubtedly Witch, this is Jesper with Jesper Chats. I hope you're all doing well. March 14th, 1968, a few weeks before Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, he spoke uh, a speech that's titled, A Riot is the Language of the Unheard, the Other America. What is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the past few years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. It has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice, equality, and humanity. So in a real sense, our summers of riots are caused by our nation's winters of delay. As long as America postpones justice, we stand in the position of having these reoccurrences of violence and riots over and over again. Social justice and progress are the absolute guarantors of riot prevention. George Floyd, a black man, was murdered by a police officer in Minnesota only a few short days ago. And while the officer in question and three other officers who stood by and did nothing had been fired, and I recently just found out that the assaulting officer has been taken into custody, um, the rest have not been arrested, and the chances of them seeing charges brought against them are very slim. That has rightfully enraged the people of Minneapolis, and peaceful, peaceful protests have turned to, to, into a takeover of the city by its black citizens, while police officers still brutalize peaceful protesters and unarmed citizens, even arresting a reporter essentially because he was black. On top of all this, I just learned that a Tony McDade, a black trans man, was murdered by police in Tallahassee and is being ruthlessly misgendered in the media and by the police on top of having his life snuffed out. There's been many reactions to these stories and to the events unfolding right now in Minnesota. And I feel called to speak to my fellow white folks who are either misunderstanding the situation or maybe are feeling unsure of how to respond. Luckily, my friend Lillian shared some great insights on this and said it far more eloquently than I ever could have. And with her permission, I've been allowed to read this to you all. Fellow white people, we don't get to have an opinion on the way black folks react to the murder of their own by white people. If you do something other than supporting them, you are supporting white supremacy. Implicit in white supremacy is the idea that we know better than they do. We can't, we aren't them, and our experiences are not compatible. Even for those of us who are discriminated against for reasons not having to do with race, it's not the same thing. If you see and hear other white people doing this, please step in and correct them, especially in your lives, your homes, your work, your social media feeds. It can be scary to speak up about it, but think about how much more scary the result of not doing it can be. We owe black people financial compensation and reparation, time and labor and support. We don't owe them our shitty and ill-formed opinions from the perspective of people who have not, have not, have not been through what they have been through. Give them money. We owe them. By being white and alive right now, we owe them. We owe them money and resources. So do work to support them. We owe them that too. And share their voices and their words. Don't fucking tell them how to feel, how to react, or how to protest. Again, thinking you know how they should react is a symptom of racism and white supremacy. Wipe that urge out of your brain. We are incorrect when we think that. We cannot know because we have never experienced 
what they've experienced, no matter how many articles and Twitter feeds we read. Please stop doing that and start doing things that help. Thank you, Lillian. In my own spiritual practice, my personal practice, I have come to understand that my faith is directly tied to the community work that I do. Justice and right relationships to the land and to the people are core. And as a white male presenting person, I have privileges that are not, frankly, owed to me. But I can use that privilege to push my contemporaries to hear and do what is right in cases such as these. I am now going to echo Lillian in saying we Americans owe the black American community our time, our money, and whatever resources we have available. I encourage you to give to one financially or through other resources that are available to you to one of the following organizations. Uh, first, there is an official George Floyd Memorial Fund on GoFundMe. I will be posting the links in the description section below. Black Vision Collective, which is shaping a political home for black people across Minnesota, centering their work in healing and transformative justice principles. Reclaim the Block, which organizes Minneapolis community and city council members to move away from putting money in the police department and into other cities budget spaces that promote community health and safety. MPD 150, which is presenting a practical pathway for the dismantling of the Minneapolis Police Department and the transference of its social service functions to community-based agencies and organizations. The Minnesota Freedom Fund, which provides cash bail to those who are currently being held in jail and can't afford it, and they are also actively working to end the cash bail system. There's also the Harriet's Apothecary, which is an intergenerational healing village led by the brilliance and wisdom of black cis women, queer and trans healers, artists, health professionals, magicians, activists, and ancestors. And finally, a particular um, organization that is near and dear to my heart, a sovereign embodiment. This is um, a person that offers body work, divination, and workshops for and by queer, trans, fat, disabled people of color and their allies. So let us help our neighbors in Minneapolis and in the neighborhoods that we live in so justice and progress. And with it, we can help grow a time in a land of peace. Until next time, may you all stay safe, well, and well fed.